the murky waterways of southern Mexico City, a true genetic marvel is on the brink of extinction. It's called the axolotl, or Mexican salamander. And since the 1800s, researchers have been studying how they regenerate damaged tissue, not only limbs, but heart tissue, spinal cord tissue, even brain tissue. A 1998 census found there were about 6,000 wild axolotls per square kilometer in their main refuge in Mexico City. By 2004, that had dropped to about 1,000 per square kilometer. And in 2014, less than 35 per square kilometer. According to one model, by 2020, there may be none, at least not in the wild. But one group of scientists they have a plan, and joining me now is the leader of that rescue mission. His name is Luis Zambrano. He is a biologist at Mexico's National Autonomous University. And sir, thank you so much for joining us. First, tell us why. Why is the axolotl on the verge of extinction? Well, I think that we have three reasons, but basically this is because this is the, the urbanization of Mexico City. I mean, the wetland is in, in Mexico City. Uh, the axolotl just live in that, in that area, or at least the last remains of axolotls are still living in that area. So we have three basically problems. One is the urbanization per se. I mean, the, the axolotls stress with human population and but basically with with noise. Uh, the second one is water quality. Uh, Mexico City needs a lot of water, and then it's stealing the water from from the wetland to to human uh, necessities. And then uh, we return that water to the wetland, so the water quality has dropped in the last 50 years or so. And the third problem is the uh, exotics invasion of carp and tilapia, which have been invaded most of the. Uh, water systems in Mexico, but uh, but here is really really bad. Uh, so we have these three problems, and those are causing the reduction of axolotl population. Yeah, a human encroachment, invasive species, water pollution. These are the threats. So what can be done to restore the population in the wild? Well, basically, we are trying to do uh, the same thing that we have done for uh, almost 2,000 years in that area. Uh, that we forgot in the last 60, 70 min, uh, years. Uh, we we are trying to restore, I mean, the, the area where they live is called Xochimilco, and it was the huge barn or the food production of for Mexico City. Uh, and in the last 50 years, it's changed mm. that uh, for, for urbanization process. So we are trying to restore the traditional agriculture, which was living very well with axolotls for 2,000 years since the Aztecs arrived there. Yeah, and these are remarkable creatures. They can regenerate tissue. If we lose a species, is this also a major loss for science and medicine? Yeah, uh, I mean, the thing is, like, we we may lose the, the genetic variability of the species because the wildness, uh, the axolotls in the wild are by far more diverse in terms of genetic structure than the ones that are in tanks around the world. I mean, we have axolotls in, in, around the world in different colonies, but they are less diverse than the ones that we have in the wild. So we can lose a lot of things, particularly Mexicans, we will lose part of our history because the axolotls are part of our culture because axolotls have been, become part of our culture for a long time. Well, we 